A trio of free agents are not expected to return as the Leafs start to sort through their off-season priorities. We'll discuss that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your daily fix for all things Leafs. I'm your host, David Morissuti from Sportsnet. As always, the Locked On Leafs podcast is a daily Maple Leaf Central podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from, and you can now catch us up on video form on YouTube each and every day, Locked On Leafs, because it is your team every day. This episode is also brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. I am going to be flying solo for today. Mike DeSefano, my co-host, is expected to be back next week. She's just sorting through a couple of things. So uh, expect me expect Mike to be back next week. And we got a full, full show to talk about. A couple of things, least related. We still don't have a lot of news to discuss, but there are a few things kind of trickling down the wire here that we do have to start to bring up on the show. You know, we're getting... We're inching closer. The next big event is the NHL draft. There are a few windows opening right now, like the buyout window. Teams are starting to figure out what they're going to do with the restricted free agents. And the Leafs are one of those teams that are going to have to make some decisions uh, over the next few weeks. So we're going to discuss that. But before we even do that, it's it's interesting when you hear kind of start to hear a little bit of the rumblings of where the Leafs are starting to go with some of their players, specifically the unrestricted free agents who are expected to hit the open market. And it's it's one thing for a player to hit the open market. It's also one where so one other thing when a player hits the open market where the team is just, just closing, pretty much closing the door on a potential return. And we got a little semblance of, you know, the Leafs, potentially looking to part ways with a few players and uh if you hadn't listened to it the chris johnson show with our boy cj there he did say that and i'll quote him saying it's my understanding at this point that some of the veteran players that have been with the leaves that are ufas like alexander kerfoot justin hall michael bunting even that they won't be back i think that those players are all going to the open market now so cj is pretty much reporting that the leaves are starting to look at where their you know where their priorities are going to be for the offseason, especially free agency and some of the players that likely we we knew like if you were looking at the Leafs pending free agents, there were some where you're like, yeah, I can see why they wouldn't be back. Some we were wondering, you know, do does the regime, the new regime, listen to you know head coach like Sheldon Keep on certain players, or is this you know? Kyle Dubas' guys that he brought in that, you know, this new regime just doesn't see as a fit for what they want to do going forward, right? So this is what happens when you bring in a new jail manager. You know, yes, there are some players here locked into contracts that, you know, might be a little tough to figure out what you want to do with them. But there are some where you can just say, you know what, we're closing the chapter here. We're going to end it. And I'm sure a lot of these fans were kind of happy to see, especially for two of them with Justin Hall and Alexander Kerr for two guys who, Really near the end of their careers, it was becoming clear that they're just not the players that the Leafs need them to be, you know, playing the roles that they're playing and the money that they're getting to just wasn't working out here. And you know what? There's still players that might, you know, in, in increased roles can still maybe do something for a team in with the Leafs. They're never going to get that role, nor do I think they were deserving. Like Alexander Kerfoot, no, no one thought he was a viable top six player anymore on this team. So you know, when he was brought in here, he was seen as kind of the replacement for Nazem Kadri. That's obviously didn't happen there. Uh, Justin Hall, always that top four right shot defenseman, one of the few that the Leafs had and just not providing that style of play that they need on their back end. So two guys that I guarantee that, you know, they'll, they'll find a job elsewhere. They're both UFAs. They're both pretty, you know, respectable in their age. Justin Hall, a little bit older at 31. Kerfoot's still 28. You know, that's prime of his career. He might still be able to lock in a deal somewhere. I'm sure there's going to be some interest out there on the market. But it just goes to show that the Leafs are already starting to figure out where their priorities lie. And just 
how they plan to overturn this roster to support the guys that are going to be here long term, right? You know, just to give you an idea of who's not going to be here, right? So Noel Achari, he's going to be he, he is a pending free agent, somebody that Mike and I have kind of discussed that we would like to see back. Zach Aston Reese, you know, in and out of the lineup, fourth liner, unless he's going to be coming back for cheap, that's going to be a tough one as well. You know, the least would probably consider bringing him back if the contract was right. Michael Bunting, as I mentioned, like, you know, probably going to see a decent, you know, decent uh, offer out there that the Leafs, I, I just don't see the Leafs uh, being able to, you know, afford or want to afford in a lot of ways. Uh, David Kampf, another guy that, you know, you'd like to have back, but you have to be sensible about what he is looking to get in free agency. And there might be a team that, views David Kampf in a higher role than what the Leafs probably would use him for. And then you got Ryan O'Reilly, who we thought maybe was never, you know, was not an option to come back considering how the end of his season went, the press conference. Then you hear him kind of, you know, with the new new general manager in place here, potentially some changes happening. That makes a player consider his options, but when you see that there might be other teams interested and might be willing to offer more, it's going to be, a, that's going to be another tough one for the Leafs to have to figure out there. And then on the back end, Eric Gustafson, like I don't expect Eric Gustafson back at this point, Justin Hall. Um, yeah, he can go for sure. And then Luke Shen, the one that seems to be a, a little bit of a priority to get done. And the Leafs have reportedly started contract talks, maybe try to see if they can figure out if a deal can work out there. So, this is a this is an interesting time where, you know, some of the guys that are on this roster, you definitely want to take a run at them now before they hit the open market before. You know, if you give them a good enough offer, I'm sure their agents probably understand what their market value is. So, you know, if they feel like it's close enough and, you know, some players, if they like the situation here, they'll try to say, you don't think Noel Chari, if the Leafs come in with a half decent offer, you know, that he wouldn't consider reading up. Uh, he is coming off just to look at his deal. He's coming off a deal of $1.25 million. I mean, if the Leafs will, are willing to offer something in that range, you know, the 1.25 to 1.5, I don't see why the Leafs shouldn't do that. That's the type of player you need in these playoffs. He was extremely valuable. You know, he was kind of the sweetener on that Ryan O'Reilly trade. And I think he was a lot, a lot more impactful in the role he was playing, right? You know, in that right role, third line, maybe a little too much at times, but he didn't show that he didn't belong in that bottom six. So he's definitely someone that you would like to try to get back here. So yeah, some decisions have to be made, but you know, like Kerfoot, he was making a little, he was obviously making too much for the reduction. He was, he was providing, you know, at 3.5 million, the least can use that cap space in a much better way you know that's why many thought he was going to be out the door to make room for some of these trades happening obviously the Leafs didn't see they they tried their best to get that third team to come in take some salary back so they didn't have to make that trade and they obviously wanted the depth and options with Alexander Kerfoot they wanted that safety net we didn't really provide much of a safety net yeah he scored that one overtime goal good for him but there wasn't really much you need guys to at least provide something especially when they're being paid three and a half million dollars so yeah i don't see that happening michael bunting we already said you know could be a guy that gets what four to five million dollars on the open market i mean there it's not there's not really a lot out there on the old on the free agent market so depending on how a team values him maybe kyle dubas in pittsburgh looking to improve the forward depth or even just uh, augment what they got there. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, that's one of the calls that's being made um, once the free agent market opens. So, yeah, a lot of lot of decisions that will at least will have to make here over the uh, over the next few weeks, right? Like to hear a player to hear about certain players right now, it's a little surprising, but I think it's just also the reality of you know where the team stands and what they need to figure out. So. There are some more decisions that are going to have to be made that are going to vastly shape what this Leafs team does in the offseason. One of those guys being Matt Murray. His contract is one that, you know, has to be moved. 
we've it, it's I mean, I don't see an avenue where he is back, especially at the price that he's being paid. And you're seeing other guys have stepped up and maybe the Leafs are also looking at other options to improve in goal. So we're going to discuss one of the avenues being open right now with the buyout market, why this might be something that the Leafs really do consider doing. But it's also a timeline that is not open very long. So Leafs are going to have to make a decision one way or the other uh, over, you know, very soon. So we're going to discuss that on the other side but before we do today's episode is brought to you by one of our show sponsors and that is bird dogs if you're looking for the right clothing for the summertime something that is versatile something that you know looks good but also very functional that's what bird dogs provides bird dogs has stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg but they also give you a truly sculpted look Bird dogs do the exact same thing as Lululemons, but fit way better. And they fit better than regular shorts because they are not made of very stiff, restricting cotton. They find a way to invent the cloud knit fabric to make it look like khakis with stretches in a way to give you a slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird dog uses anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day. And I like using my, uh, my bird dogs when I go golfing. It's perfect, you know. Uh, the versatility there and the movement you need while you're golfing bird dogs is perfect for that and a lot of other things too and also if you want a little extra bonus with your bird dogs order well this is something you can get from bird dogs this came with my order from bird dogs because you can go to the bird dogs.com website slash locked on nhl you can see the link here on the screen also in the, the description we'll have that there and you can get this yeti style tumbler with your order that's bird dogs.com slash locked on nhl for a free Yeti style tumor, you want to take care of, you want to make sure you take advantage of this offer and you won't want to take off your bird dogs once you get them. We promise you that. Welcome back into the Locked On These podcasts. It is your team every day. And we just talked about players that we don't expect to be back with the Leafs. And, you know, it, it's. There's one player that's going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Leafs figure out what they're going to do with Matt Murray because they do have avenues to get rid of this contract. And a lot of people are saying, let's see if the Leafs can make a trade and and give his, give his salary to another team, which would be a very ideal situation. Um, the other option is the buyout option. But before we talk about the buyout option, because I think before any team explores the buyout option, they have to really have to have that honest conversation with those and say, can we make this deal without, you know, can we can we do this without buying out the contract? Because once you do that buyout, you can't trade that buyout money, right? It's stuck there. Um, so with Matt Murray, that's obviously something the Leafs are trying to figure out right now. But if everyone says let's trade Matt Murray, you no, know, maybe if you can attach a pick to it, obviously not a high pick. The Leafs don't have a lot of draft picks, right? Especially in this draft, they only have three, and the best one is their first rounder. So the the here the question here is: Do the Leafs do what they did with Peter Morazic, attach that first round pick and get a like a second round pick back, basically move back in the draft? It, it wasn't a bad scenario because they did get a pretty decent draft pick and Fraser Minton out of it, right? So that's something you can do. Um, obviously, if you can attach a pick that's not a first-round pick, if you can do something like that, it would be a lot better. But here's the issue. A couple of them, actually. Who are you trading Matt Murray to? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. Who are the teams that can take on the Matt Murray contract? Right, they're gonna have the cap space and ability to do it, and and honestly, the roster space, because Matt Murray can still play right now. Obviously, that can change just by him skating a warm up. He could tweak something, and he's out. But a lot of teams have to have that flexibility of the roster space, and also with their cap situation as well. And let's not forget, and Mike and I discussed this a little bit, you know, when we were bringing up what to do with Matt Murray, what we expected to be our, the ideal situation for what the Leafs can do with Matt Murray. You have to remember that Matt Murray's contract is done in a way that there's still a good chunk of change owed to him. He is owed a total of 
eight million dollars, right? Now, the Leafs are not paying all of that $8 million. The Ottawa Senators did take upon some of that. His cap hit is at, you know, 4.687, so close, pretty much $4.7 million. That's that's a heavy chunk of change you're going to have to ask a team to take on. And there's not a lot of teams willing and able to do that, right? So, obviously, the one everyone's going to look at is the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks are in a position right now where they're getting Connor Bedard. They're going to have to start building this up again. Once you get a player like Connor Bedard, you got to eventually start to make some moves to get better. I mean, judging by the moves they've made the last little while, they're not exactly going to get better. Like when you're taking on Nikita Zaitsev, you're not expected to be a better team. Now, Chicago is in a very interesting situation because they got a lot lot of draft picks they have two first round picks including their own the Tampa bay lightnings draft pick they have four picks in the second round so this gave me one idea where okay if you're the leafs and you tell the blackhawks can we do the peter Mrazek trade 2.0 where we trade you our first rounder and you consider trading one of your second rounders to us. They got four. They got the Lightnings, who are the latest one. They got the Senators. They got the Rangers. So the Lightning and the Rangers ones are the two that would be the easiest ones to trade back if uh, if you're going to target something like that. And, you know, the, the Blackhawks are not expected to be good next year. They have Mrazek already signed for the for going into next season. You add Murray to that, you technically have a tandem. You could probably get a third goalie there. Um, you really don't have many options in their system when you look at what they want to do for their goaltending situation. So, you know, if, if they want to give somebody an extra year or if they want to bring somebody along, that is an option there with the Chicago Blackhawks. I think that's if if the trade to, trade route is where the Leafs go. That's I think where you can explore this and you just get rid of that cap hit, sign our goodbye. You don't have to think about it anymore. But you have to really w- wonder if that's the situation the Leafs can actually get done. Now the other team that I I saw somebody put this out there was the San Jose Sharks, who they're an interesting team because, again, they're not a great team, but they're not, I mean, their record would suggest they're not a good team, but this is a team that's not in a position where they can just tear it all down and rebuild. They want to get better, but they also need assets. So they have two first-round picks this year, a second-round pick, and Carolina's third-round pick. So you, if you're the Leafs, can you figure out a way to make that trade work? They only have uh, Capo Kakinen signed. Going to an extra James Reimer is a UFA. So you have to wonder if they're a team where you can maybe convince them to take on, maybe you take convince them to take on Matt Murray. I, I just don't know if that's going to be possible. Right. Like, is that something that they want to do at this point? Do they want to be taken on salary when they may want to be getting better in some way? But I don't know. That team doesn't scream contender next year. So you do one more year, you load up on some assets and then you try to take a run. Maybe next year could be very possible. Eric Carlson could also be traded. They could start to do some a bit of a retool there as well. So those are two teams you could look at to trade with. But if you can't go down the trade route, if you decide, you know what? We don't want to attach an asset just to move away from Matt Murray. Then the buyout option is the second one. And right now the buyout window is open. So um, you do have 48 hours um, to do to get this done. Um, I don't know um, if that's something the Leafs would want to do at this point, because here's the thing. The Leafs are a team that need every single dollar at this point to try to make contracts fit. Like you, you can't, you can't think about, you know, okay, it's just like a million or a couple million. That's very important, right? So the first buyout window is opened 
uh, it opens on Friday. Okay, so that so that's right now as you're re- listening to the show. June sixteenth is when the bio window opens, and teams have until June thirtieth, five p.m. According to Chris Johnson, that's how long they have to figure out if they want to actually do that. And look, the Leafs are not the only team uh, considering doing this, right? Um, there are a few deals that they're going to have to figure out if they're going to be able to, you know, there's other teams that are going to be making certain buyouts of contracts for the least Matt Murray is the only one that you're going to look to buy out. And that one we've, we've discussed it before where, you know what you do save on next year's contract. That's what makes it such an attractive option to buy him out. Right. Because you would actually save, you'd only have a $687,000 cap hit. Not that much because also Ottawa's taken on some of that. Where the trouble becomes is the $2 million in the second year because it's $2 million to the Leafs and about six, just on just above $650,000 to Ottawa for the cap hit there. If the Leafs buy about $2 million doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're the Leafs and you're trying to, you know, improve your contention window and one, use every penny possible. Now, there are ways to increase what you can do with the salary cap. Vegas Golden Knights just showed how you can get a roster together without having to use, you know, have that hard cap. Obviously, you got to have players going LTIR and all those things, just like they did with uh, Mark Stone. Leafs don't exactly have many options like that, other than Jake Muzzin, who's not expected to play again. But the Matt Murray one. You know, if the Leafs can't get a reasonable deal done in a trade, and the great thing is, is the Leafs have time to figure this out. They don't have an unlimited amount of time, right? They still got to get this done before free agency and before the draft. Because if you're doing any trade with Matt Murray, it's going to be done uh, likely before or at the draft, just like it was with Peter Morazic. So you got to be very careful. You know, teams are going to try to weaponize their cap space and get a really good deal back. But what what's the cost to move on from a Matt Murray? Do you just say, you know what, we're just not going to move any assets. We're going to bite the bullet and take that $2 million cap in the second year. Or you think if you can get a deal done, that makes sense. You just move them away and clean slate $4.6, $4.7 million on your books. Very interesting situation, but it's one to watch over the next little while uh, to see what the Leafs do there. All right, that puts a close on some of the guys we expect to leave the Leafs. Now we got to figure out, are there players the Leafs actually want to keep around going into next year? And there are a couple of RFAs, pending RFAs, the Leafs are going to have to have some conversations about to see if this is something, if these are players that they want to have back and at what number do they want to have back. So we're going to look at a couple of those, uh, whether or not arbitration is going to come into play here. But before we do, let me tell you about one of our other show sponsors. It is our title sponsor. It is the Game Time app. You know, if you're looking to buy tickets for events with friends and you don't want to go through a stressful experience, Game Time is probably one of the better ones. It's fast. It's easy. You can go, you know, sports, music, comedy, theater, whatever it is near you. Game time will likely have those options for you. They have great deals on last minute tickets. Their best prices are guaranteed. You can, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you will have. And I'm somebody that used the game time experience not too long ago to get some uh, Blue Jays tickets. Actually, I waited. I waited a little bit. Game time was showing me which tickets were, you know, going down in value. Last minute tickets, good deals. And I was able to find what I needed to get myself to those to that Jays game, especially during a you know, very popular game like the weekends where tickets are not readily available on Ticketmaster for a good price. Right. So you want to make sure you're getting the best deal possible. So forget about planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts comedy theater and more the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find your tickets in the same section a row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference you also get images of your seat before you buy and you can buy tickets with it in a matter of seconds two taps and you are set and they're sent directly to your phone so you don't have to dig through your email 
All right, so download the Game Time app, create an account, and use co- promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into Locked On. These podcasts it is your team every day, and uh, I am here for this show. Mike DeStefano, my co-host, is expected to return next week. Uh, gave him the, lot, the next few days off, just you know, kind of regroup himself, give him a little bit of a break, you know, because uh, we're going to be very, very busy over the next few weeks. There's going to be a lot of chatter about what's going on with the Leafs, and we also have to have some discussions about what the Leafs are going to have to do going forward with their with their roster, right? And a lot of that also comes with the RFAs, the restricted free agents that are okay. You now have a position right now where you have to get your qualifying offers out. Uh, arbitration rates are something that I'm going to have to figure out as well with some players. So the deadline for arbitration, I believe, is July 5th uh, for 24 hours, followed by 24 hours where the team can elect arbitration. So um, certain players get the right to do arbitration. There are only four on the Leafs that are eligible for arbitration. That's Elias Samsonov, Victor Mete, Pontus Holmberg, and Mac Hollowell. Out of those four, if there is a player that's going to try for arbitration, it could be Elias Samsonov. Um, it might be the best avenue for both players to see if they can get him at a lower term deal that they can afford. Um, you know, his qualifying offer, uh, is $2 million at one point. So at $1.8 million is his qualifying offer. Um, like I, I, I wonder what the Leafs do figure out with the Samson off situation because, because he's an RFA, let's say the Leafs new management decide, you know what? We may want to see if we can do better than Elias Samson off. You can trade him and get something back because he is an RFA and, and you know what? The problem here is that it is a very it's supposed to be a very large, lengthy goaltending market right now. Like there's a lot of potential options out there. You're hearing about UC Soros being out there. You're hearing about Connor Hellebuck being out there. You know, do do teams decide, do the Leafs decide, you know what? Let's go and get ourselves one of those top end goalies that you know might not cost a lot salary wise and use Samsonov potentially as a as a chip to go and get that other goaltender. Um, The other question here is, what is Samsonov looking for in a deal, right? You know, he was kind of here to reignite his his value, right, when uh, the Capitals didn't uh, extend him a qualifying offer. Now, he had a good season. You know, he had some really good games, but he also had ups and downs. It wasn't a perfect season. It was a 919 save percentage. 2.3 2.3 goals against average, better than what the Leafs had had from, you know, Jack Campbell and other guys in the past. I'm not complaining about really Ely Samsonov. His goaltending was good enough for them. In the playoffs, it wasn't great, though. Like, there were good games. There were also some brutal games. In the Panthers series, he wasn't the reason they lost, but he also didn't, I mean, I'm not going to expect him to have the Sergei Bobrovsky performance each and every night. So like that's a tough to go up against expectations here, but his save percentage was below 900. He had a 3.13 goals against average. You look at what the Vegas golden Knights got from Aiden Hill average to even in some cases, above average goaltending does wonders for you in the playoffs. I don't know if the least got excellent goaltending, but it wasn't the main problem. I'm going to stress this. It wasn't the main problem, but there are certain teams that get get a goaltender that gets on a run for them and they ride the wave, right? You know, Joseph Wall came in when uh, when Elias Samsonov went down and showed, you know what? He gave the Leafs every chance to stay alive in the playoffs in the two games that he came in. So this, this is where the situation gets tricky because, yeah, Matt Murray is expected to go out the door. How it happens, what they decide to do is, is going to be an interesting one there. Joseph Wall, there should be no reason why he is not getting his chance to go to the NHL. And that gives the Leafs potentially an option where they say, you know what, we got Joseph Wall here. 
We want to give him a, a decent amount of games to play. The second goalie, we don't necessarily need to get a guy. I mean, now getting guys that play 60 plus games doesn't really happen in the NHL anymore. If you can get them to play less, it's better for them in the long run. So it'll be interesting to see if, you know, Joseph Wall is, you know, one guy and the Leafs bring in somebody totally different to go out with him. You know, maybe Joe Wall's the 1B to somebody else's the 1A or he's the backup and kind of the understudy for somebody because I think Joseph Wall should be in the NHL next season. And he offers the Leafs some, some decent cap savings too, right? Like his he's on a very, very pretty much team friendly deal if he realizes his potential and can stay healthy you know not many goaltenders like he's he's here for the next two seasons at $766,000 that is some good value even if he's a backup goaltender some backup goaltenders you got to spend 1 million dollars 2 million dollars depending on the goaltender if he's a 1B guy that has to play a significant amount of games right Yes, Joseph Wall hasn't played more than seven games in a regular season at the NHL level. So you have to manage expectations. I totally get that. But this is somebody who really stepped up this season. You got to see if this is someone you can roll with. So, and you're not setting him down to the Marlies. You're not risking losing him as well. So the Samsonov one is, is a situation that bears keeping an eye on. Uh, another player that's got arbitration, right? Pontus Olmberg. I expect him to be uh, one of those Marley graduates that they try to get, you know, potentially to replace some of these veterans that are leaving. You can say goodbye to Alexander Kerfoot because you have a potential of Pontus Olmberg who can be a bottom four, sorry, bottom four, a bottom six player. You know, David Camp, like to have him back. Maybe Pontus Olmberg can be. Uh, David Camp, you know, replacement on the fourth line. And pretty, if you can get it, you should be able to get him at a cheap rate too because he doesn't have a lot of NHL games uh, under his belt either if you can get him signed to a couple of years as well. Some other guys that need to, uh, they have to do, figure out what the qualif- qualifying offers. Nick Abruzese, uh, he's due a qualifying offer. Semyon Durgachensev, he signed a deal in the KHL for next year. So Leafs only have to issue him a qualifying offer if they want to retain his North American rights. But, you know, you also have to realize, you know, with certain players, you might have to cut bait because you don't have really have a lot of uh, space for them as well with contracts and stuff. So it's another one to consider there. And uh, Philip Kral is also due a qualifying offer. He's also an RFA as well. Now, there's a potential where all these guys may not be back, but, you know, the Leafs are in a situation right now where they're going to have to figure out how much of this turnover are they going to do under the new management. So those are situations worth keeping an eye on, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on those uh, going forward. Uh, well, I thank you all for listening to the Locked on These podcasts, and well, that will do us for today. We'll be back next week. Mike DeSefano should be back next week, and we'll uh, – Start to really dig in on these issues that the Leafs are going to have to face and solve going forward. So uh, make sure you go and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. You can follow the show at Locked On Leafs on Twitter and myself at the underscore Morsuti. And also uh, make sure you tell all your friends to come and subscribe to us. Leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast from. We always appreciate that. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube. We're back with another episode next week. But until then, keep locked right here. Unlocked on leaves.